Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. It's a summer holiday and whilst I don't like to spend too much of my free time thinking about school, it pays to do a little bit of housekeeping with our digital classrooms over the break. Whether you're carrying on with the same classes or teaching the same course to new students or starting something completely new, this video will help you hit the ground running ready for the start of the new school year. I'll be showing you how to archive your existing teams from last year, explaining exactly what this means for you and why this is really the best way to wrap things up. I'll show you how you can access these archive groups again in the future in case you want to go dig something up or even fully restore them later. We'll see how to move or copy your existing files and folders over from your old groups into your new groups and also discuss what can't be moved and what we can do about this. I'll briefly discuss strategies around managing your linked to OneNote class notebooks, although I'll be spinning this out in much more detail in its own separate video coming soon. At the end of this video, I'll explain how admins can use school data sync to archive all of the previous year's classes for the entire school, saving everyone else that extra work. This video has been sponsored by Microsoft Partners and my good friends at Satchel, makers of Satchel One, which is home to show my homework now being used in one in three secondary schools in the UK. Towards the end of this video, I'll be showing you some of their new productivity tools that integrate seamlessly with Microsoft 365 and Teams, which I know you'll find very interesting. So do make sure you stick around for that. For many teachers, this last academic year would have been the first time they actively used Microsoft Teams with their classes. And they may be wondering what happens to all the stuff that they shared via Teams over the course of the year. Now, if that's you, then fear not, I'm going to walk you through it. Just like your real classroom, there will be resources you definitely want to keep on using, some things that need to be filed away just in case, and lots of stuff that you just don't need anymore. In Teams, you might have posts and conversation threads between you and your students, resources, handouts, worksheets that you've shared, homeworks and assignments that you've set, and maybe video lessons you've recorded. Some of this you will definitely want to keep, some of it you might decide later to reuse, so you just want to hang on to it for now. But a lot of it is just digital detritus that you'll never look at again and don't want cluttering up your shiny new online group for this year. Hands down, the easiest way of doing this is to archive your existing team, create a new team group for your new class and move over the stuff you definitely want to keep from the old group into the new one. Anything you're not sure about can just sit in the archive team, tucked out of sight, but easily accessible if you suddenly decide that you do need to retrieve something from it. To archive a team, you first need to tap this cog up here in the top right corner of Teams and select Manage Teams. This will bring up a list of teams that you are a member of divided into two separate areas, Active and Archive Teams. If you've never archived any teams before and your school doesn't do this for you, then you'll just have a list of active teams for now. To archive a team, simply tap on the three epsilons at the end of its row and select archive team. Now you can only do this with teams you are listed as an owner for. If you're just a member, then this option will be missing. Once done, your team will disappear from the active list and reappear in the archive list. If you change your mind, you can reverse this process simply by expanding the archive list, finding the team, tap on the three epsilons and then restore team. So all very quick and simple to do. What exactly happens when you archive a team, you may well be asking. Well, firstly, and most obviously, its tile disappears off your main team's view and also off your student's view and anyone else who is a member of that team. So archiving all your old teams is going to unclutter things ready for the new year and allow your new groups to take center stage. As you can't see any of them anymore on your main team's view, if you do want to open them, you will need to click on the cog again, go down to your archive groups and click on the list there. They will still open up the same way and it will appear exactly the same and contain all the same resources and posts that were there when you archived it. You'll notice that you get this new banner up here telling you that the group is archived 
and you can't make new posts. And that's the other main change. The group is mothballed, so you can't add anything new to it. But the advantage of archiving over deleting your old team is that you can always go back and reuse your stuff at a later date. Additionally, all your old teams can be used to cookie cut a new assignment for a new group, which can save you a lot of time. Students will also continue to have access to their turned in assignments and grades in case they need to refer back to them. If you use the class notebook, and you really should because it's awesome, then you can use your old class notebook in an archive team as a template for creating a new one in your new team. Also, students will continue to be able to access their old class notebooks, which they wouldn't be able to do if you'd simply deleted their old team. As class notebooks are held as a resource within the group, deleting the group will delete the class notebook along with it, and this may contain the student's own work. So, best to be avoided. When creating your new team, first click on the Join or Create Team button up here, Create Team, and select Class option if this is going to be a class group. Notice you have this Create a Team using an existing team as a template option down here. Tapping on this gives you a list of all your teams, both active and archived, so you can pick out last year's archive team to help you get started. It's not going to bring over resources from the previous team, but you can bring over the structure, so all the channels, tabs, settings and apps that you added, along with the class list of students if you want to. Just tick or untick anything you want or don't want to bring over. So if I'm carrying on with the same class, I can easily make a year 11 group with the same look and feel as the old year 10 group. Once that's done and you've recreated your team, you might decide you need to bring over some of the content from last year's group into the new group. I've already mentioned that old assignments can be reused as templates when creating new ones. And similarly, when you recreate your class notebook, you can use your old notebook as a template and bring over any sections you want to include from the outset. You can always do this again later if you're not sure. I'm going to do a separate video on managing class notebooks from year to year, so keep an eye out for that. If you're not yet subscribed, why not do that now? Hit the bell and that way you'll be notified when it comes out. You can also bring over all your files and folders from the old group. First navigate to your old archive group. Do you remember how to get there? You go via the cog, manage teams, into the archive teams at the bottom and click on the one that you want. Go to the files tab and then find the document or folder that you want to move over. Now for individual files, you can simply select one or more file and then tap the move or copy buttons up here at the top. This will give you a pop-up dialog box within Teams where you can navigate to their new home. You'll have to use this up arrow first to get up to your list of all your teams and then drill down into whatever folder you want the files to be moved or copied to and then press the move copy button to do the deed. Folders are a little bit trickier as the move copy button doesn't show up in Teams when you select them but they can be moved over if you first tap this Open in SharePoint button first. You may or may not know much about SharePoint, but it's where Teams actually stores all its files and folders, and going over to the SharePoint site where your files actually live is going to give you lots more options. Notice it's taken me to a SharePoint page showing me the same files and folders that I can see in Teams. Here you're able to select an entire folder then hit these three dots to move or copy it where you want it to go. The interface is slightly different. You get this pop out side panel instead where you should be able to locate your new group. You'll need to navigate into the documents and then general folder within that group or the channel if you've got multiple channels in the team and then move copy your folders over. So what can't be moved over from an old group into a new one? Well, firstly, any conversations you've had with students in the post section cannot be moved, although any files you attach to those posts, you can move over from the files section. The other thing you can't move is your gradebook. 
If you've made assignments in the old team and applied grades to them, you can't bring those marks or grades over. You can, however, export them to Excel, and so you can easily pull these into an eMark book or departmental spreadsheet if you use one of those. The other thing you can't bring over is your usage data from the Insights tab. Again, you can export this information to Excel if you do want to keep track of it in future years. You can always go back to your old archive groups and look at these things if you need to, but they can't be merged into new groups in Teams. And so both gradebooks and the class insights are going to be a fresh slate for the new academic year. This is no biggie for me. It's what I'd want it to be anyway. If you're interested, at the end of this video, I'll show you how your school can save you all a job and use school data sync to archive all teams for everyone automatically ready for the new year. So you don't have to. Stick around for that. First though, let's hear a bit about this video's sponsor, Satchel One. If your school is planning on using Microsoft Teams a lot with students this year, then you'll want to check out Satchel One's award-winning suite of productivity tools designed specifically for education. The best known being Show My Homework, used in one in three secondary schools across the UK. Over the last 18 months, Team Satchel have been improving the features of all their tools so that it works seamlessly with Microsoft 365 and has become a complementary tool to Microsoft Teams adding to and enhancing the key features that make it work much better in a school setting. They've recently also become a Microsoft partner and will be looking to deepen their existing integrations with Microsoft over the coming months. Show My Homework can massively improve student engagement with online assessment and homework tasks by ensuring parents and students are kept better informed on what has been set and what students have handed in. Real-time notifications sent direct to your mobile devices keeps everyone in the loop. Assessments can directly utilize the teacher's OneDrive, allowing them to simply attach and share homework templates that they have created in Word or PowerPoint. Students can work on their own digital copy at home or in school and submit these electronically. Teachers are then able to review, feedback and grade this work seamlessly all in one interface creating a dialogue of their interactions with the student as they go that parents can review and which clearly evidence the learning journey as students level up and improve their work. Other great apps in the Satchel One toolkit include a web-based attendance behavior and reward system and tracking tool that will write back to Sims whilst also keeping parents informed. There's also data-rich automated seating plans to reduce teachers' workload and the easy access to Collins online textbooks across all course subjects that can be assigned as homeworks and used by students at home or in school. Satchel One offers full single sign-on access to all these tools with existing Office 365 or Google accounts, so no additional usernames or passwords to remember or maintain. Whilst we are hopefully coming to the end of lockdowns and home learning, Working electronically with the students and setting and submitting homeworks and assignments online is definitely here to stay. Satchel One now integrates with both Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom and it complements both. So if you want the very best online experience for the teachers, students and parents of your school, then share this video with your leadership team or if that's you, simply follow this link, uh, which you'll also find in the description below and book yourself a free demo. Satchel are also offering a free 30-day trial of their learning platform for anyone interested. Just make sure you quote Mr. Tompkins EdTech when inquiring. Finally, let's look at how we can make the end of year process a bit easier for teaching staff. If you have access to an admin account, you can use School Data Sync to archive all your school's class teams at the end of the year, ready for creating new ones. Simply go to the SDS website and log in with an admin account. Go to the People tab and then tap on Memberships. The first thing you'll need to do is run an up-to-date group report by tapping here and selecting Generate New Report from the pop-out side panel. This might take a few seconds to run. You'll have to close the side panel and reopen it a minute or two later to get the updated group report to show up. Download the report using this button here. It's a CSV file, so open it up in Excel. 
you should find a long list of all your active and archived teams, which may be quite long if you've been using teams for a few years. Scan through the list and delete any rows containing teams you don't want to archive. Once you're happy with the list, save your changes and go back to SDS. This time, tap on Group Cleanup, select Group Report, and re-upload the edited CSV file and press Next. The process can take a bit of time to run, maybe an hour or so, if you have a lot of groups, but once it's finished, all of the old teams will have been archived. Don't forget to alert your staff about what you've done to avoid mass panic, and you might also want to share this video or this much shorter two minute guide to archiving groups and teams so they know how to find their old teams again if they need to. Okay, that really is all we have time for in this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like. This helps give the video a nudge with the algorithm. Also, why not subscribe if you haven't already? I'm posting regularly on all things EdTech, and if you subscribe, you'll more likely see my new content suggested for you when you're rummaging through YouTube. Check out some more of my EdTech content by clicking here and here. See you in the next video.